Celeste is a video game that I absolutely love. I casually speedrun it, so I thought, wait a minute, what if I go to the variant section and ramp up the speed to try to beat the game at almost twice the speed? This is the story of that challenge. Forsaken City went pretty well. I soon discovered that most of my speedrun fancy tricks were doable if I reacted quickly enough. But I struggled in some rooms, especially the ones that implied ledge grabbing. There is this particular room that has two traffic light platforms and if you stand in them for too long you get smashed into the ceiling. That one was pretty tough. I had quite some trouble getting past it as the platforms moved really fast, but I barely managed to dodge death and escape it. I also must say that playing the game like this makes Madeline feel like a total badass when things work out, dashing and jumping at a super fast pace through the Forsaken City. I even managed to perform the final trick of the chapter, which I consider was quite a feat. Next was the old side, which was fairly easy. Using the space platforms was not challenging, even though they were a couple of tricky rooms. However, everything changed when my other self started chasing after me. Dark Madeline also moved at a really fast-paced velocity, so I had to think quickly and I couldn't stay anywhere for much time. Getting past the last two rooms was really difficult, and it required that I played at my absolute best. I mean, look at this shit. It is insane. After that, I reached the information site and finished the chapter with ease. Celestial Resort is one of the hardest speedrun sections of this game, so I thought this one would be really tough. And I was really surprised when I started playing it, and indeed, it, it was really tough. I died a lot in this chapter and conquering every item to clean up wasn't easy. But I persevered, trying to react as fast as possible and being precise enough with my jumps and dashes. While escaping a resort, I decided to perform a skip that is really complicated in the any% percent route. You basically have to jump while grabbing a ledge, move to the left and in a two-frame window perform a crouch dash. Madeline becomes invincible for some reason and you are able to cross to the other side, skipping a couple of rooms in the process. I must say that I'm not able to get this skip on normal speedruns consistently yet, as I am still a beginner. Here's what happened. The escape sequence at the end of the chapter was very hard, but god damn it looked fucking cool. Escaping Mr. Oshi through a lot of obstacles while he's charging at lightning speed is the most anime shit I've ever seen. The last room was a nightmare, and I died a lot of times, most of them because Mr. Oshi, the other ones because of the dust creatures. I also died a couple of times really close to the finish line, which was frustrating, but I summed all my obstination and I kept trying until I made it. And hey, I only died 143 times in the process. Golden Ridge has my least favorite mechanic of them all. Wind. But combine wind with extra speed and this chapter was ridiculous. The first half of it wasn't so hard, although I had to try the spike skip a lot of times before achieving it, but in the second half things went south incredibly fast. The wind kept making me miss the ledges, dash in weird directions, miss platforms, it was and soul crashing, but oh boy was I pissed. The last rooms with the extreme wind and the snowballs being thrown at you and oh, oh by the way, who, who throws these snowballs? Why, why do they hate me so much? Well, what is going on here? What's the backstory of the of them of the person that is throwing the snowballs? Any, anyways, it was quite a challenge to dodge everything while advancing against the fierce wind. The last room wasn't that hard and I did it on my first try, but I want to show you how cool this looks, so I'm going to shut up for a second and let you see it for yourselves. Mirror Temple is a weird one. It starts fairly easy, especially if you use the speedrun skips, but it also has one of the hardest sections of the game and two sort of complicated skips. The first one consists of doing a hyper dash in a moving platform in a perfect angle to dodge two rows of spikes. Performing this at this speed should have been really difficult, but I did it on my second attempt. Might... Might I be... Might I be good at this game, people? The other skip consists of a reverse extended super which makes you able to barely reach the last platform. I honestly find this one a lot easier than the first one. However, the hard part of this level is dealing with these horrific Lovecraftian creatures, which by the way are programmed to shatter your hopes and end your dreams. 
Their homing trajectories are really difficult to dodge. Sometimes they appear to be sentient and wait for you to commit a mistake and then they charge their attack. These monsters are really tough to deal with and the faster speed made them more dangerous and also they recover faster. So yeah, I was pretty fucked. You find this not difficult at all, you might say? Then how about you have to transport your hipster friend who somehow got inside of a crystal block while dealing with Lovecraftian horrors that will kill you on the spot. This section was absolutely the cruelest one, and I died, and I died, and I died, and I died until I reached this mother eye and blasted 70 kilos of pure hipster vintage raw power and destroyed it. Chapter 6 is my favorite one, if I have to be honest. I f***ing love this chapter. However, as I started moving with the golden feathers of the starting room, I soon discovered how hard it was to control them at this speed. But well, that was a problem for future me, because now I just went down to the depths of the mountain and tried to get back with these funny blocks that... <laughs> look at them, they sound so fucking funny compared to the regular playthrough. I somehow got the ledge skip at my second try and kept advancing. Ancient pinballs were introduced in the following rooms and they seemed fine for now, although it was a bit complicated to hit them correctly and carrying momentum. The room with the three pinballs was really tough, for example, and after it my fears materialized, as I had to use a golden feather and dodge a lot of ancient pinballs. It was horrible. From this point, each time a golden feather had to be used, it was terribly challenging. Despite everything, I entered the other self boss fight with high hopes. The first stage wasn't that hard. Projectiles moved a lot faster and were harder to dodge, but it was challenging in a fun way. Do you know what wasn't fun? The second stage and all the fucking golden feathers you have to use to get close to Dark Madeline. There was one room in which I had to dash out of the feather early in order to avoid death, and then somehow avoid getting killed by a laser while approaching my other self. The end of the fight ramped up even more the difficulty, but after many attempts I managed to conquer the chapter, I had some character development and also developed another dash. The summit awaits. So here I was, after everything I had been through, the final push. The first meters of the mountain were not that hard, although in some situations I made it barely dodging death. I also thought the Celestial Resort section would be the end of my sanity, but I got through it without dying too much. Maybe at this point I was used to everything moving super fast and my reaction times had adapted to the new pace, but I felt pretty confident as I slowly climbed Mount Celeste. Even Golden Ridge wasn't that hard. Wind was a minor inconvenience and Mirror Temple just had a couple of rough moments. After I climbed more than 2,500 meters, I reached the last stage just 30 flags beyond me. The summit was awaiting. I used every trick in the book for this part. The first 10 flags were fairly easy, even though dealing with the wind pushing me down was sometimes really annoying. Flag 22 was particularly tricky, as I had to precisely dash upwards at the height of my jumps to keep going. The next 10 flags weren't that bad, except for flag 14, my arc nemesis. This section is kind of a resistance challenge, you advance while slowly diminishing your stamina and if you don't make it high enough, you can make the final jump. Flag 9 is also among my least favorite ones and dealing with it at a faster pace made me go mad for some time before I was lucky enough to make it past the spikes. Flag number 7 was really cool as I bounced off the wall like a ninja and after I dealt with the horrible golden feathers at flag 3, I knew it. I was going to reach it. Mount Celeste was going to be conquered. I made it to flag 1 first try and kept advancing as the music slowly faded away and I saw the red flag pole in the distance, on the top of the mountain. I made the last couple jumps and there I was, the Dark Mandalorian, contemplating my journey and all the challenges I had to face. I conquered them all. And so, that was Celeste, but faster. An incredibly challenging but fun run. This case being one of my favorite games and I cannot recommend it to you enough. Trust me, it won't let you down. I ended the run in an hour and a half with a total death score of 549, knowing that one day I would return to the mountain to face it again, perhaps with another variant making things more interesting. I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, 
I will humbly ask you to like the video, subscribe to Walrush if you want to support us, to comment your thoughts about Celeste and this run, and share the video with anyone who might be interested. Until we meet again!